Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Whitlings Prototype. This is episode number 29, <clears throat> and I think what I'd like to do today is start working on or begin trying to solve the problem of cubes that would be obstructing the player's view. Uh, currently, when we've been testing, we've just been testing on this linear level here, but I made a couple of extra additions. And so the idea is <clears throat> this cube is now being blocked by this cube, <clears throat> so we can't see its neighbors. And what I'd like to do is find some way to alpha out maybe 80% of these cubes so that the user could still see what they're working on. And then as they select a new cube, the alpha and transparencies would go back to normal based on <clears throat> the viewpoint of the player. So I'm kind of not quite sure how I'm going to approach this. <clears throat> So let's go to line drawing mode. So let's say I have this top down view of a cube. I know that my exit points are on the corners and in the center, right? I think those are all of the exit points with our paths that we have currently. <clears throat> and what's really nice about this, <clears throat> um, excuse me, sorry, is that since these are all of our connections, all of our paths out and in, that means that we really only have to care about seeing these five cubes. I'm not too sure if we're going to go up. Maybe just solve it. <clears throat> well, that is something to consider, right? Um, because if we've got our cube here, and another one here, then we're going to want to be able to see <clears throat> the path or this face of the cube here. We want to be able to see that. Hmm. So this is already a tricky problem. It would be easy for us just to say, okay, what neighbors does this cube have? <clears throat> And I did have a thought that we could try to we could look for connections to decide what a cube is connected to, but I think that this is not a great idea <clears throat> because if these two paths aren't connected, that's probably a cube that you're really interested in. You know, maybe you do want to connect that path. So look for connections is out. It might help, but we can't rely on that alone. <clears throat> well, you know what? Instead of looking for connections, we could just look for path path nodes, right? Or leaf nodes. And you know, our leaf node would maybe be <clears throat> um, here and here. We've got a 90 degree diagonal. <clears throat> and so this is a little bit interesting because with this face, we only care about this cube currently. 
And if the face was moved around, maybe the things that were hidden would change. I don't know how much I like that. Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Hmm, so... We have our cube that the player is focusing on. What if we defined a larger cube of... What's a good way to describe this? Like, playable area? Not playable area. <clears throat> Cubes of importance, um, relevant cubes. I like that, relevant cubes. And so we know that our current cubes have a radius of 1, a radius of 0.5. And so if we made a bigger cube centered around this one, oh boy. with maybe a radius of 1.5. If the radius is 1.5, that means that this... Oh, I just had a really good name for it. Relevant cube area. Right, but with a radius of 1.5 and centered around the focused cube, that would give us essentially a 3 by 3. Oops, that's not what I want. So, you know, it's going to be a, almost a Rubik's Cube shape. This does, <clears throat> hmm, yeah, I can see areas where this might fail. Because what if there's a cube right here, right? And this is not to scale. But if there's a cube right here, so that means it's offset diagonally and up from our focus cube. <clears throat> I don't know if we should be able to see through that. My instinct tells me I should be able to see through it. Hmm, I think this is something we're going to have to test. But I like this idea of making a relevant cube area. And maybe what we could do uh, let's say so I'm gonna I'm gonna shrink our relevant cube area. This is still a radius of one point five, but my idea <clears throat> is that if we have our camera over here, maybe what we need to do is do like a ray cast to, from the corners of our big cube to the corners of our camera. And that would sort of give us this, this would be sort of a side view, a frustum. It will give us a frustum.
And then we can say any cube that you hit <clears throat> that's inside of this frustum ooh, and not part. Um, I guess not inside of our relevant cube area. Cube is inside frustum. And not inside relevant, hide it. I am still absolutely shocked that, un or, sorry, Unity's colliders only exist in local space. So we might have to do the same bounds trick that we did earlier to make our our sphere collision happy. Hmm. No Firefox on this machine. Yeah, this is a tricky problem. There's a lot of things to keep in mind as we try and solve it. <clears throat> but remember, what we want to do first is test something simple. So maybe instead of worrying about how this camera system is going to work, maybe our first step should just be to fade out a cube by some amount. And that's also going to be something that I want to lerp. So this is going to be another use of our easing um, component. OK, so here's our path walls. Maybe this could go in the cube core. Or maybe it could be its own. What does this is start end do? Uh oh. That's not good. Let's turn off maximize on play. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so he did hit a dead end. That makes me happy. I was worried for a minute there. Yeah, let's put it into its own script. I don't think it's going to gain anything by putting it inside of the cube core. It doesn't need to know about any of this stuff. Got a cube fader. Okay. And of course, Visual Studios. Highlighting is broken again. That is par for the course. Let's 
Transform Ease. I might want to rename that because we're not just doing transforms anymore. And let's call this Fade Ease. Of course, Visual Studio doesn't remember where it was placed. So we are going to need a list of mesh renderers. And in awake, I should call this mesh renderers. I like that better. Get components in children, mesh renderer. Cannot implicitly convert array to list. Um, I guess we could just use an array here. And let's print out length. So my count is one mesh renderer for the core and then six mesh renderers, one for each face as well. Mmm, two. Right. So maybe we need to move this to start instead. Two. <sighs> hmm. I also think that I did, um, I think I attached a light to the camera. Oh, did I not do that? I thought I did that. So it can only find two at first. But here, yeah, no path face, this has a renderer. Oh, it's off. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. I still should find more than two. Hmm. Let's check out our cube manager. So this is in start. Oh dear. We can get rid of this. Spawn makes the thing. So maybe we can say core find mesh renderers. Uh, 
Let's do another require. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yes. Require component type of cube fader. Oh my gosh, I've typed cube face so many times. I'm <laughs> I'm locked into it. Find mesh renders. So we'll just channel this through the cube core into the fader. Oh, cube core failed. That worries me a lot. What where are these errors? Transform child out of bounds. Is this because I turned on is start end? Oh, it's probably just a failure, a cascade of errors. That's what I think is happening here. So our cube core never got the fader. Where is your awake? Oof, that is nice. Let's just delete this whole function. Oof, feels good, man. Okay. Strange. Oh my. What is going on here? Cube rotator. Here's my cube fader. I guess I'm going to need to... Let's turn off this up. Let's unset this. Update faces, and then apply. What? All of these should have changed. Seven. A hey, very nice. And five times three. Uh, and that's angry because our
Our start and end don't have a fader. How about now? Will you be happy? Nice. Okay, looking good. So our cube. I want to put this back to um straight. Let's make sure everything still works. Because I did delete that find node. Yeah, everything seems happy. Always nice. Okay, so let's get this fade working. Who is going to fade? I choose you. For ease of life. Let's put a serialized field bool test fade. Fade ease dot begin. Try to decide, do we need to <clears throat> add and remove these, these lambdas to our delegates every time? Or can we just do it on start like we did with our camera controller? Hmm, how's time looking? Okay, halfway. Not bad. Let's just do it here. Okay, so we're going to add this anonymous function. You know what? I think each of these faces might need Let's organize this a little bit. Cube container. Okay. So this path wall material is using a standard shader, and that is not what we want. So we're going to need our own shader. Have we done any shader work in here? We have to have.
Ooh, I usually do unlit shaders, but we might want a standard surface shader. Hold on, let's see what shaders come with Unity. Materials, path, wall, mat, shader. Hmm. I think we will need our own. Let's double check. I still want... to have transparency, but I'm a little bit worried. Okay, let's give it a shot. And we will call this Fade Shader. So we're going to add one more property to here. Transparency. And this will be a range from 0 to 1. We'll start it off at 1. And this is going to be render type transparent. Render Q transparent. And then what is it? I think it's blend source alpha one minus source alpha. <laughs> well, it didn't explode. Instead of O dot alpha, we're going to set that equal to Transparency. We need to declare the variable here. I'm sure, we'll make this a half. Okay. <clears throat> Let's apply it to our material. Path wall mat, custom fade shader. Hmm. Let's see, Unity CG, Blend Mode. Hmm. 
blend source alpha 1 minus source alpha. That's correct. Q transparent, render type transparent, and Z right off. Hmm. And this is the path wall map. That should be totally invisible. But alas, it is not. <laughs> so our render queue did change, that's correct. Let's try to swizzle this and we'll just say the albedo is red, red, red. Good. Okay, so this is being used. O dot alpha is transparency. This is a surface shader. Hmm. Maybe this ignore projector true? I've never even seen this one before. Render type is transparent. Q is transparent. Oh, so this needs to be inside the C program, I think. Oh my. <laughs> Unexpected identifier blend. Hmm. This might actually be a lot trickier than I thought. I'm probably not even going to get to the really fun stuff today. I'm just going to struggle with shaders. <clears throat> but such is life. Shaders are extremely powerful. And you can do a lot with them. They, make, they can make games look so good. A 
let's put all of this I'm going to say if transparency is less than 0 0.25, return, oh no, oh, got albedo is equal to, One zero zero. Is that going to work? Probably not. Comma expression used where constructor have may may have been intended. That is correct. Maybe fixed three. Hmm. Oh, let's put this as an else. <laughs> hey, there we go. So the color is working. If our transparency is less than a certain value, we're outputting a red pixel there. Hmm. Red doesn't look too bad either. <laughs> Why are you? Light probes, blend probes, cast shadows off. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Let's try setting this up. So for each one of these, mesh renderer at render er index. Oops, mesh renderers, there we go. Now we're just going to set the transparency to the curve output. And we need to remember to call our update function. So from seeable to completely invisible. And actually, probably what I would do is let's edit this and we'll put the value at 0.3 and the time at 1. Nice slow duration, two seconds. That's really funny that my mouse scroll wheel is <laughs> um, moving the camera as well as the inspector.
Oh, interesting. Our cube core actually has the cube core shader. The transparency is at 0.3, which is correct. <clears throat> so the transition worked. Let's run it again. Back face, L path. So it's at one. I did just jump down, which I find very strange. Hmm. This doesn't really help me solve the problem that I'm working on currently. So let's try and figure out, why are you not hiding? Unity CG, standard surface shader alpha. Q transparent, yep, he set this up. Changing the line. Make sure your camera has a clear color. <laughs> oh, this is from 2010. Good grief. Oh, no, that's when he joined. <laughs> Can I do this? Is albedo at vector 4? Hmm. Okay. No, nothing. Let's store that color just for future reference. I'm surprised. Oh, hey, that did it. Oh, these these casting shadows are so bad. But it's happy now. Well, that looked like it. 
kind of worked. So our cube core mat, we need to use that material as well. Cube core mat. Dang, that looks cool. Uh oh. Let's turn on all of these. Fourteen failures. Hmm. And this still doesn't. Maybe point three is too high. That still looks pretty bad. <laughs> Maybe half it again? Point oh five is so low. Hmm, that looks a little bit better. We are going to need to not look for, basically, when the cubes become invisible, we want to make sure that our mouse clicks go through them. Oh. Whoa, what is happening here? Our path nodes died. What have we changed? All we did... Let's do this. So they shouldn't fade anymore. Oh, that's why. Why are there two in here? 
Oh dear. What the heck? Okay, cube fader, that's fine. You can hold control to let Unity snap these things to a onto a unit integer. So if you want to move something by exactly one unit, you can hold control and mouse drag around. Hmm. Well, we kind of did it. Kind of. I mean, our fade looks terrible. Looks really, really bad. But we can kind of see through. And we've got more work to do later. <clears throat> so I think that's it for me today. Actually, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to turn off these generate shadows for each of my face types. So this can receive shadows, cast shadows. Do, 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 do. path faces, boop. Always make sure to apply them. That was our L diagonal. L path, no path. Straight diagonal, and then finally, straight path face. Whoa, cancel. How about now? Well, everything but the straight path face. You know, that looks kind of cool. Cast shadows off. I bet it doesn't know that these faces changed. So these ones 
just had the previous prefab still hanging out on them. So I think if I update all of these faces, I definitely need a new button to do that. Much better. Hmm, looks cool. Well, that is it for me today. I think in the next video we're trying to we're gonna get our fixes. Or I guess we're just going to fix the way that this looks because it looks pretty bad right now. The fade is just not pretty. I honestly feel like we might want to fade it even more because this is really getting in the way of what we can see. But that's it for me today. I hope everybody has a good night, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Good luck on your work.